what is this? Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo. We're out and out, we're out and out, we're out and out. Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo, this is the Oddcast. Hey, yo. We're out and out, 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 we're out and out. This is the Oddcast. Hey, yo. <sighs> Looks like we made it. This is the 22nd episode of the podcast. Feels is like a uh, reunion. It feels like we're, you know, like we're, I don't know. It feels nice seeing you again, man. You too. Yeah. First episode of 2024. <sighs> we made wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's almost springtime. It is. It's been uh, unseasonably warm here in Chicago yeah. the last winter. It's Which, like we haven't had a winter. It kind of bums me out, to be honest. Uh, so for any of you folks uh, who are new to this, we are from Chicago, um, we're normally used to some horrible or very brutal winters, and this winter has been just a mild spring, mild fall. Uh, there was some there was some bad blizzards, I would say, but it only lasted for two days, and then the third day everything melted. So, yeah, that yeah. one insanely cold week from, i think that was december or something was january was, december around there it was early it was early in the winter yeah. season and i was freaked out i was like god this is gonna be a harsh uh, winter I, I was happy i was excited but I, at the same time i understand why you go through this because you live in a basement yeah it was yeah. fucking cold in here yeah. our heat and our heater's not the best we uh, probably need to get it serviced or something but it like shuts off before it reaches the thermostat temperature so we were or it was like 60 degrees in here for a few days i i live in the second floor so heat rises and my building apartment it's it's all uh radiator so i can't control the heat so mm -hmm. if it gets too hot i just have to open a window that's chicago living right there and is your heat just ma managed by the building? Yeah. Like you don't have control over your own thermostat? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a way to control it on the radiator underneath, but I don't want to fool around with it. So I just leave it like that. Okay. <sighs> Guys, it's thank you so much for uh, watching us. For anyone that's still interested in the Oddcast podcast, uh, I'll say it now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, we love it if you make comments or put any comments, good or bad. We just enjoy any kind of uh, critique, criticism, opinions, options, options, thoughts, concerns, anything. It's uh, very nice from you guys to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Thank you for the engagement. Keep engaging with us. We like engagement. <laughs> and speaking of engagement, uh, Dylan over here is... Uh, Getting pretty famous on Instagram with the reel with the cat and the mouse. That sounded like you were going somewhere else. No. Like, I got engaged. <laughs> oh, no. We, yet, not congratulations yet. to our good friend, uh, oh, yes. Robert and Rachel, yes. his partner. They are now engaged. Yes, it's very beautiful. Um, we're happy for you you two. Um, you seem, seems like you guys are very, very happy. And it's, I'm, I'm just, I, I can't say it enough. I'm happy for both of you. Um, I said that mainly so I have an excuse to put in pictures of me with a beluga whale. Yeah. <laughs> I went to their secret surprise engagement party at the Shedd Aquarium, which was a lot of fun. Were the people in Shedd Aquarium nice? Super nice. Okay. Yeah. Everyone was very, very sweet, very excited for them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where were we? We were going on a tangent. I was just saying to people that you're 
your reels are getting popular and you're getting more followings on Instagram with your uh, art. Yeah, um, it's been a wild couple weeks. To this day, I'm still happy that that person made that comment that that cat and the mouse reminded them of Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. That yeah. that commenter made me so so happy. <laughs> Um, yeah, I thought of you as soon as I saw that. I sent you a screenshot. No connection to that person. I don't know that person whatsoever. So but, anything related to Don Quixote is like your favorite thing. Can you explain something you posted on Instagram last night about Larry uh, David? I don't okay. know enough about either Don Quixote or like Curb Your Enthusiasm to know what you mean. Okay, so like uh, I woke up like around three or four in the morning, couldn't go back to sleep. I'm trying yeah. to go back to sleep and then boom, that idea popped in my head. That Larry David is like the modern day Don Quixote for the sense that uh, Don Quixote, uh, for, for people who don't know, this is a story written by Miguel Cervantes in the 1600s about this man named Alonso Quijano, who was a rich man or rich for, for the time being, uh, read all these chivalry books uh, and decided to be a, a knight and goes into these crazy adventures, made a friend named Sancho Panza, who's a short, fat guy. And, you know, just go to these, you know, he's a writer of wrongs, is that's what the book says, and mm -hmm. tries to make things correct, you know. Um, sometimes he fails, sometimes he succeeds, and it just made me think, like, that's kind of like Larry David, uh, in the sense that, like, yeah, Larry David is not going in adventures, but, like, he's just living day to day, and he critiques what societal norms and and say like we shouldn't be tolerating this when it's not acceptable yeah. there's moments where i agree with it there's moments where i disagree with it there's moments where he's successful at it there's moments where he's unsuccessful at it nevertheless both of them are funny when they when they when they go through these adventures um and both of them are old both of them are rich <laughs> um and i'm not saying that larry david's best friend in the show is uh Jeff Garland, his manager, but for the sake of this, you know, comparison, I'm just gonna say it because Jeff Garland is a fat guy like Sancho Panza. I can't picture who Jeff Garland is. Um, it's it's fine. I'll look it there, up. There, there's there's a there's a funny joke on the last on season eleven or season ten where all these people go to him, all these strangers go to him. It's like you are a piece of shit. How dare you? I hate you. And they they look at him. It's like oh, I'm sorry. You look like Harvey Weinstein. I apologize. So he looks like a lot like Harvey Weinstein right now. And okay. like, um, there's ele there's more than eleven seasons of Curb. This is the this is the last season, season twelve. They're gonna quit. Yeah, it's the last one. And um, since we're talking about this, what the heck is his name? Uh, the, uh, a comedian just passed away. Uh, Richard mm. Lewis. Richard Lewis passed away. And oh he, yeah, I saw that news article, but I he, he's, don't know him. He's a constant uh, character in Curb Enthusiasm, and. Uh, you will be missed, man. We we loved you. We love you. We loved you. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Um, Little tidbit there for all you Larry David and or Cervantes fans in our audience. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't. I have this bad habit of. Uh, I mainly listen to podcasts where I'm already interested in the topic. Mm -hmm. I'm not really big on podcasts where it's just like two friends shooting the shit. Yeah, yeah. Which is unfortunate because like. I enjoy making that. That's the no, most I fun do. to do. It's just like we're hanging out and mm. sharing our conversation. But uh, I need to like know the topic and like want to learn about it to mm. be invested to no, watch a that. whole podcast. So today was your decision to your your turn to choose the topic. Can you tell what the topic is? To yes. So uh, we're going to talk about two seminal rap albums of the '90s. Uh, I chose Jay Z's first album, Reasonable Bo Reasonable Doubt, and uh, when I assigned that to Oscar, I asked him to choose an album too. To and we'll like kind of duel the albums against each other. So you chose. The, uh, I was gonna say Dallas. Oh no, uh, Tribe Called Quest, uh, The Low End Theory, which is their second album. Yes, and kind of the catch of this idea was that. The album we each chose has to be one that we're more familiar with, but the other person hasn't really heard. And in my case, I've heard some of the songs on this. It has some hits, uh, the Low End Theory album, but I, I've never heard the whole album. And same for you. You haven't yeah. heard the Jay-Z album. I don't know that much Jay-Z. I only know the Blueprint. And 
The yeah. one with Rick Rubin, the Black Album. But I only know the Black Album because of DJ Danger Mouse's The Grey Album. Mm. So. Yeah, which is a really cool piece of art, I think. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not a huge fan of much Jay-Z after his first album. He got really mainstream, and I think fame yeah. and success kind of went to his head in a way that was detrimental to his art, to be honest. Should we just start talking about Reasonable Doubt now? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I happen to agree with you. Uh, in, uh, from reading some of the stuff online, uh, even JC says that this is his best if, or favorite album. Oh, Jay-Z himself says that? Yeah. And I didn't read that quote, but I've heard Chris Rock say it's his favorite album ever, and he uh, like, thinks it's Jay-Z's best album. I think that's actually how I heard about and it. Chris Rock, he knows his hip-hop. He knows yeah. his hip-hop. Didn't he move, make that movie Top 5, where it's like kind of about listing your top five MCs? And I don't remember. It, it's about stand-up comedy. It's like autobiographical, but uh, it's, a, it's a good movie. Okay. I remember watching it at the time. Uh, only, only documentary I've seen from him is Hair, when he talks about the... Oh, yeah. You know. Man, that was Chris Rock's, like, Hollywood movie era. Well, he's done a lot of, like, bad adult comedies yeah. <laughs> with Adam Sandler and stuff. Yeah. But as far as being the auteur and making a, his own movie... I think he should keep on doing that. He should. He's super talented. Yeah. Uh yeah, I still feel bad for him about the Oscars. So fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Did you but see anyway. his response to that a year later in his stand-up? I did see some yeah. clips. I forget exactly what he said. Uh, selective rage that Will Smith practiced that. Oh. What exactly did he mean by that? As in, like, he, you know that he was angry at August... So he should have used that anger towards him, but since he's not around, he used it to someone else. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Anyway, I don't want to get into a can of worms on Will Smith and Jada Pinkett's relationship. That's where my mind wanted to go, but we don't. I don't know enough or care enough to talk about that. I don't want to give that energy to them either. It's just too much. I just totally. I find Jada Pinkett annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, and. Okay, now I'm going to critique Will Smith. Not not about the that scenario that happened, but his acting. Um, I loved him in Fresh Prince, and I know that ever since he got that acting bug, he wants to get an Oscar so bad. Um, and I feel like every role that he wanted to get an Oscar was like the similar role is Pursuit of Happiness, <laughs> you know, where he is torturing himself to succeed for a better life. And it failed once. He did it again with uh, seven pounds. Failed again. And he did it again with oh. King Richard. And the King Richard, he won. And I was just getting tired. It's like it's the same formula. And he was just waiting for the right moment so he can get the Oscar. And that's it. Now that he has an Oscar, what now? Like, I still miss like, the comedic side of Will Smith. Yeah, and, he's very naturally charismatic and funny. I, f- I kind of forgot that he won for King Richard, and I still haven't seen that movie. It's pretty good. You saw it? It's pretty good. <laughs> it's about the Venus sister, Venus yeah. and Serena, yeah. <laughs> William sisters. Yeah. And I even like tennis, so I should have watched that by now, but the whole fiasco with the slap made me like not want to yeah. watch it. You re- okay, going back, I mean, we got to go talk about Jay-Z, but remember Casey Affleck, how a lot of people didn't support him or talk uh, or want to talk about him because of the... Uh, His brother? No, no, uh, Casey Affleck, allegedly, or maybe he did, I don't know, I forget, he uh, sexually assaulted someone. I didn't hear about so this. So he kind of got canceled, but he still won an Oscar for um, Manchester by the Sea. Oh, yeah. So I saw Manchester. Movie. That movie's great, dude. <laughs> I, yeah. To quote, to quote Robert, our friend, um, surprisingly funny. I, w- I was shocked how many times I was laughing, even though this movie's supposed to be extremely depressing. See, I, I don't remember it very well. I just remember watching it and being kind of blown away emotionally by it. So I don't remember if it was funny or not, or if I found it funny. Uh, watch it again. Watch it again. Like, do you have a good memory for movies you've seen? Sometimes. Sometimes, but not really. Like, I can't quote movies that well, but I do remember, like, scenarios or scenes, but... Like, if you tell me to quote, like, a movie, like, uh, Beethoven, the 1994 
movie with the dog. <laughs> I I can't quote shit from that, but I can it's a tell random you, choice. You know, just something random. Like I know I like learning about it and what years it came out and the director and some writer and some actors and writers. But like memorizing the quotes, it has to be a very good quote in order for me to memorize it. I mean, I'm not even talking quotes. I mean, just the general plot. Yeah. I don't remember what Manchester in the in by the sea was even about. Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> sure. Let me see if it jogs my memory. Um, basically, Casey Affleck's character is trying to survive the guilt he had from being an alcoholic because he felt like because of his alcoholism, his kid died. I don't know if it was a daughter or son. Oh. Died in a fire. So yeah. that, that was the that, that was the background. I but the now he's trying now. to survive, and then he finds out that his brother is dead. So he's trying to be there for his family, and so he's trying to be supportive for it with his for his nephew. Mm-hmm. But it brings a lot of harsh memories, especially since he has to go back home where all this stuff happened. So now yeah. Manchester is not the UK Manchester, is it? It's set it's in the, like it's New England, New England area, yes. Because yes. everything those brothers do has to be like Massachusetts. Yeah, with the Boston accent. I like the movie The Town. I Have you seen, seen that? that one? Oh my with god! With Ben Affleck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And like Rebecca Hall, I think is the lead actress's name. Really good, like uh, crime mob action okay. movie. I'll watch it. It's like The Departed, but more actiony. Okay. But yeah, back to Jay Z, and then Jay-Z. we can uh, we, we'll do more topics, <laughs> off-topic stuff uh, as we go. I'm sure. But w- since you heard it for the first time, what what were your general thoughts? Um. I'm normally iffy when it comes to skits and hip hop music. <laughs> sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's corny, sometimes yeah. it's good. Um, this one was good. I liked it. It was telling okay. a story. I'm surprised that was your verdict on the skits, but go on. Um, I mean, I could I could have looked into it more. I I know it's a typical New York accent, but when I first heard it, I thought it was John Leguizamo. I thought so too. <laughs> I still like hear or see his voice when I hear the first yeah. skit. Yeah. Um, there's a little is bit, it maybe no I don't think it is I don't think it is but you know it is a typical accent from 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 that area and John Leguizamo is from New York mm-hmm. so um, uh, I, I do feel a little bit like unfinished because the, the the skits didn't complete the story yeah and, and when is a skit or an album full of skits really like adding that much that that's the one yeah. part of the album I think it's I'll just play, show my hand here. Yeah. I think it's almost a perfect album, except for the skits. I think they kind of ruined the yeah. flow, and I, I wish they weren't there, but I feel that way about skits in pretty much any album. So yeah. for what they are, they're entertaining. They, they add a lot of like humor, and mm-hmm. they create a setting of this like night, like under underworld of crime in New York, and yeah. it's cool, but it's not necessary. I'd rather just hear the songs. I agree. I agree. Uh, I mean... The the band or the hip hop group that started the whole skit thing was De La Soul with Three Feet High and Rising. Okay. So you can make the argument that that even though that album is a perfect album, did it ruin hip hop <laughs> because it introduced skits? De La Soul is now a band uh, like Tribe Called Quest that I haven't heard too much of their uh, discography. I, I was contemplating adding De La Soul to this topic because I listened to Three Feet High and Rising more, but I chose with the low end theory because I wanted to listen to this one more you know yeah so test myself or challenge myself so to say so i mean we'll we'll dig more into jay-z of course but as a pairing i thought they were interesting because low end theory is like five years earlier Mm -hmm. it's 91 Mm -hmm. and uh jay-z even references like uh, the, uh the, can i kick it yeah on in a skit or yeah. like a song slash yeah. skit on reasonable doubt which is actually on their first album but still like he clearly is a fan i, I, mean, I would say n- game represents game and they're both from new york so they just yeah. want to respect each other it's a good thing you didn't yeah. pick a west coast rapper that would have been <sighs> that would have been con controversial well, yeah i just i'm gonna make my controversial opinion right now New York hip hop is better than LA hip hop. Yeah, I, I like Biggie and Jay Z and Nas a lot more than like NWA and stuff. The only exception I have is, you know, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. 
Kendrick Lamar is like god level, but I but don't Kendrick know. to me is like the product of listening to all the great hip hop of the '90s, East and West Coast. Yeah. So he has like flavors of both. I mm-hmm. feel, even mm-hmm. though he definitely reps Compton a lot in yeah. his music, but it's not. It doesn't sound like stereotypical '90s West Coast rap. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I guess he's got the jazz influence. Mm-hmm. This kind of tribe called Quest, like. And so also the funk stuff as well, which yeah. is you know from listening to other music. Is a big part of why you like low end theory the jazzy elements. I know you're a jazz head. Yeah, I do. I, I just love the bass in it. Yeah, the bass is so catchy. And also, I I I got introduced by Tribe Called Quest is because when I was in a band, Circus in the Fog, we covered um, "Take a Walk in the Wild Side" a lot, mm-hmm. and then I hung out with a with some local band. I forget the guy's name, but uh, he told me that he always thought that we were going to play "Can I Kick It" by Tribe Called Quest. Are they the same sample? It's the same sample. It's the same sample. Is it are they is it sampling Lou Reed? Yeah, take a walk on the wild side. Yeah. Oh. So I had I to listen to it that. and I'm like, oh shit. You know, I always I was geek when when a hip hop group uh references old school rock, you know? Like Kanye yeah. with uh King Crimson. Yeah, totally. So I, that's where I started listening to more of that and yeah. Would you say all the like jazzy bass lines and stuff are sampled. Are they having any of that played originally for a Tribe Called Quest? I don't know because I think it's I think they had like an original basses because there's, I can't think of any of the like the like the bugging now. I I don't remember yeah. it from another. Yeah, they're, jazz they're very album. like distinctive yeah. original bass lines. So yeah, um, I was in the car listening to Low End Theory with Brooke yesterday, and the first thing she said, she's a sucker for like bass line she loves hearing a good bass line so she was into that but she was like sounds like upright bass on a lot of the songs it is so i was wondering if that was a sample or if they actually had a session player playing upright for in the studio i wondered the same thing but i feel like 90s hip-hop especially the new york scene they use a lot of the upright bass even in hip hop. In hip hop. Wow. I mean, I, I'm just judging it from Dela uh, De La Soul and Tribe Called Quest, but okay. like maybe even Nas. Yeah, I could yeah. see that yeah. with Nas. It's such a classy sound to yeah. like hip hop uh, with that jazz sound, and I it makes me wonder what real jazz aficionados would think of it. Mm. Like, is it jazzy enough that someone who mainly listens to like bebop would be able to groove to an album like this or would they like feel like the vocals the rap is distracting or taking away from the sound Uh, have you ever talked to a jazz head about like jazzy hip-hop you know i would i would say this i I never talked to them about this but i would say this like now they would appreciate it a whole lot but when it came out i have a feeling they would hate it yeah you know i could see that yeah (laughs) you Damn kids, get off my (laughs) jazz lawn. Yeah, so uh, maybe that's all the preamble we need for introducing the two albums, but we can just dive into... Maybe we should talk about Low End Theory first, because it came out first. Um, Unless you don't want to. No, yeah, it's fine. Um, What's your favorite song? Or what what, what part made you say, damn, this is my best part? Yeah, what... I wouldn't say well, song, but like I like, I think it starts really strong. Although by the fourth or fifth song, a lot of the the beats and the like the tempos are kind of the same, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and even the way uh, Q Tip and Fife Dog, and I think there's one other guy who also raps a lot, yeah. but Patrick they're that's kind of the two main yeah. rappers. Uh, they have a, kind of a similar flow in a lot of songs, yeah. so it kind of blended together a, a bit to me. I had heard, so I had this uh, anthology CD. I think it was called A Tribe Called Quest, the anthology or something, like a greatest hit CD on my iPod back in like high school. I just burned it from a friend of mine. And I listened to that a lot and I grew to really love their like radio hits from that. So I recognized like Bugging Out, um, the scenario with Busta Rhymes, mm-hmm. like that crazy closer song. And a couple others too. I'm actually. I listened to their first album, 
whose title I'm forgetting right now. It's kind of a long, weird title about people or something. Mm. Uh, I get some of the singles mixed together between that song and this one, but that's a, a roundabout way of saying, like, I don't know if I could pick a favorite. <laughs> I like bugging out the bass line. And the, the first song is a really cool bass line, too. And we were, like, jamming to it, and you were like, it's, it's too complicated to cover. But I like how complicated the bass lines are in yeah. those first two jams. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, What's your favorite? You you, you already said it. Um, uh, the last song, especially the Busta Rhymes part, I think Busta Rhymes, like, made it make the album even better like uh, he's public enemy guy or no, i think he's by himself by himself yeah. okay yeah see my knowledge is so spotty and chuck d okay yeah. yeah uh he's just a solo guy i kind of associate him with a tribe called quest though because of that song and yeah. i think he's on a couple others maybe on on other albums did Nicki Minaj reference that when she did the rah, rah, like a dungeon dragon? She yeah. does that in like a Roman, Roman's Revenge or something. I, I don't know it, but the, the funny thing is you were talking about that. It was like I was th- listening to it, that song again and again because I, I remember hearing a portion. It was like, who's referencing Buster Rhymes? And it was Bare Naked Ladies One Week. Yeah, the really? Bare, bare Naked Ladies One Week is that Chickity China, the Chinese chicken. Oh. And then the scenario... Uh, <laughs> Buster Rhymes says chocolatey chaka, the ch- ch- chocolate chicken or something like that. It was, Whoa. you know, trying to, you know, it was referencing. I forget, I forget it word by word, but mm-hmm. I, I geeked out a lot because I didn't know that Bare Naked Ladies would go deep in, in that rabbit hole of hip hop. Do you know when One Week came out? 97, 98, maybe 99. That's funny. Yeah. I kind of want to like <laughs> memorize that song and like. Use it for like a, a karaoke because I think that would be a great karaoke song if you if That'd you be hard. if you study it hardcore. Yeah, yeah. That's the only song I know by them. It's a great song, but yeah. they're not a band I hold in very high regard. I mean, there's some <laughs> bands where you just know that one song and that's it. That's all you have to know. There's a lot of yeah. bands like that from the '90s. Like there are Sixpence None the Richer. Is it, I think that's the name of the band with uh, "Kiss Me." They have two good songs. They have that and they have There She Goes, Damn, which I don't no, know if it's a cover. It's a cover. It was a cover from an Irishman in the late 80s. It wasn't the Cranberries, was it? No, it wasn't the Cranberries. Well, the Sixpence version was a, a hit. I remember yeah. seeing it on MTV in like yeah. 2000. And I all the it. rom-com movies. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I guess Kiss Me is their one original one hit wonder chumba wumba tub chumba. thumping yeah um <laughs> that's such a weird song have you heard that song ra- lately chumba wumba uh no, I it, heard it it changes production styles like every 10 seconds it's insane what about steal my sunshine that's another one uh, who's that by uh vitamin d or something like that i don't know i would probably know Let's it see. if i heard it but you can steal my sunshine it's just they sing that every time. Oh. You can steal my sunshine. <laughs> and also, okay. I mean, Fat Boy Slim is another one, but he's got more more hits than just one. I can't think of any besides yeah. Weapon of Choice. Right about now. Funk, Funk Soul, Soul Brother. brother. Yeah. I think of it more as a like early EDM DJ turned pop star yeah. in a way. Like... I think he's more than a one-hit wonder. I mean, he's one of the most famous like DJs or electronic musicians in that genre. Mm-hmm. But anyway, going back to <laughs> low-end theory, um, this is a compliment and a critique of low-end theory. Um, I like how relaxed and ambient it is. I think it might arguably be one of the first albums where you can just be chill and just. Mm-hmm. be in the zone of what that music is and just lose yourself in the lyrics and lose yourself in the in the beat and there's nothing like like angsty or progressive like a yes album or a pink or not a pink Floyd like or a king crimson album where there's a lot of stuff going on you know it's just it's yeah. flat you know mm-hmm. in the most comp in the most complimentary way the critique is also it's also flat mm-hmm. like if you're not paying attention, you can easily get bored and you just want to skip it. Yeah. Yeah. I 
that's kind of where I was going when I said a lot of the songs kind of blend together and yeah. sound the same. It's it's kind of unusual, and the back half of the album has a few more distinctive hooks and yeah. songs with a, a very specific personality. It's got that song about date rape, which is a pretty bold political well, move know. at seriously, the time. Seriously, seriously. Right before kinda... Sublime, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that song. <laughs> They they seem like really really good people and like they care about what's right and they're not glorifying crime or even drug use. I think he mentions casually like I used to smoke weed but mm-hmm. now I don't, which it's actually a connection to Jay Z. I who was does gonna that say too. that too. I I didn't like that portion. Like I mean I guess it's got to go with the times, you know. There's some people who you follow- didn't like what that they. they both denied smoking no weed? The, 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 in the skit the woman was against weed oh yeah that yeah, part yeah um yeah that's 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 a funny moment in jay-z's album but he also has a subtle lyric about how he doesn't smoke weed just in passing okay i've heard the song like it's on feeling it i've heard it so many times that i i it stuck with me, but it's not. He's not very overt about it. Yeah. And neither is Q-Tip when he says, like, I used to smoke the weed out. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's a very, like, even-headed album, even-keeled, yeah. not a lot of range. But they were doing something that I assume was pretty revolutionary at the yeah, time. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back and hear Della Soul if you say they're also, like, jazz rap. Yeah, I mean, but the thing with Della Soul, they're more... And again, take this in the most positive light. They're more goofy. Like mm-hmm. Tribe Cold Quest is very serious. De La Soul is like, we're nerds. We love music. Let's just goof around, but also be into it, you know? And, I think, yeah. uh, first of all, do people say a tribe called Quest every time they're introducing the band? Or can you just say tribe or tribe called Quest? Take out the I think, A. I think all of them. It works. Okay. <laughs> I mean, have you ever met an Eagles fan where they get angry when he says like it's not the Eagles, it's Eagles. Oh, really? Yeah, for, forget them. Forget them. It's not the Eagles. It's Eagles. Holy shit. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Let's not talk about let's not talk about bad stuff. Let's not talk about <laughs> negativity. But it's interesting cuz they have an article in their name. A not a lot of bands start with A. I guess yeah. a perfect circle. And they were, they're a band that I feel like you have to say a perfect circle. Otherwise, it's not just, I'm well, listening to Perfect Circle. That just, that's yeah, not the name. You're right about that. So, A Tribe. But A Tribe Called Quest, it are, their name is already kind of long, so shortening it any way you can. And some people just call them Tribe because, you know, they're already revolutionary in that sense, so... The word quest, I think, is also, it's a great band name. It rolls off yeah. the tongue because, and like, they're lyricists. They, they know what sounds good, but I was wondering if... Questlove gave him like named himself after could be them yeah, or I could see that he, he's a nerd he's a, in the most I mean in a good way you know but he's not that much younger he was probably like already playing and I don't know when the roots started the but roots started like uh, their first album was in the mid to late nineties that late yeah yeah no way yeah I thought so, they were at least early nineties so obviously maybe he was very into tribe because you know they were very big in the late 80s and the mm-hmm. underground scene so I'm gonna and, go off he, on a... and he's from philly so in philly's not that far from new york so right the uh. the quest term also made me make another connection which is a nerdy one but i've been playing a lot of retro games on the steam deck lately like uh-huh. i have a super nintendo emulator uh-huh. Did you, did you ever play Super Nintendo? Yeah. I, I, one of the games that I love playing, like I remember going to my neighbor's friend's house um, and he had a Super Nintendo. We played Castlevania a lot. I love that nice. one. Nice. I've been playing a little of the Symphony of the Night Castlevania from PS1 on, on the emulator it too. Good? It's really good. It's supposed to be one of the best games ever. I'm still early on in it. I'm trying to get better at my like old game history because I find it more interesting than trying to keep up with new releases in gaming. But anyway, I'm playing Link to the Past, the Zelda Super Nintendo mm-hmm. game, and it's from 91, same year as Low End Theory. That game traumatized me. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that about it later, but go on. It's a beautiful game. I played yeah. it like in high school when it was already old, but I'm playing it again, and it's like a, a new game again. Yeah. But uh, it's just cool to think like Low End Theory was a new album the same year. 
Link to the Past was a new game. And it's just cool to think about how culture was so different then. And like 8-bit graphics and like grainy sampled jazz records and stuff, they, they kind of go together in a in a cool way in my mind now. I mean, it wasn't... Uh Zelda, one of the first ones where you can just travel, like explore. Yeah, it's it's pretty much yeah. an open so world. In, in that sense, it was also revolutionary for its time, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I know Metal Gear Solid was also revolutionary at its time because normally it was like a you kill people and then you 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 get out. Oh of the yeah, you mission. could do stealth. You could be a pacifist. Right? Yeah, and he was trying to escape without getting not without being noticed. So that was like a big new thing for the gaming world. Uh, oh, I'll tell you the story. Um, I was in Mexico. Well, the reason why Zelda traumatized me. Yeah. I was in Mexico. I was five to seven years old, right? I hung out with my godfather's family member's house, and he was like four years older than me. You know, and around that age, you feel intimidated by anyone that's older than you, right? Sure. Uh, um, he was being nice, being being you know a good host, and he let me play his Zelda game at the Super Nintendo. Don't know what the F I'm doing, you know? Uh, and I remember I was just going around, just, just traveling around, and I was using the arrows, like killing little things. And he, this guy got angry at me. He's like, no, you're wasting the arrows. Don't use the damn arrows. Use use the axe. And like They he, give you so many arrows if you just open some vases. They but like <laughs> how aggressive he got, I'm like, I don't want to play this anymore. Here you go. Take it. And ever since that then, I sucks. haven't played. But I feel like if I if I... If that didn't happen, I would have been a Zelda nerd, like everyone else in my generation. Who was this? A, a family member? Like a, f- friend a friend of the family member. I don't even know this guy anymore. He probably didn't even know the game that well, and he was just assuming that arrows were a rare resource, but they give you so many arrows. He was telling me to use the arrows for like for long shots if you want to like hit something, like to make a, get a bridge or like to hit like a, like a lever or something. I'm like, dude, I'm just a kid. Let me just roam <laughs> around and see what's up, what, what it's all about. Backseat gaming is a unforgivable crime, but I, I get it. Yeah. I do the same thing if I'm watching someone play a game, but it's not. It's like backseat driving. You I shouldn't mean, do it. There's a way of being nice about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that, yeah, that wasn't nice to just yell at you. I remember my name, uh, my roommate at the time. We we played that um Half Life, is that what it's called? Where at the with the you make a hole and you go to another portion and you make another hole and you go back and it's Oh, that's Portal, but Portal. it's from the Portal. same makers as Half Life. Yeah, Portal. So I was he was playing Portal and because of that trauma, I told myself I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, but I seen him like struggling for like a good 20 minutes. And I said to him, I gave him a suggestion. I was like, "Hey, why don't you do that and go there like and you were right i was right you know i was just waiting for him to do it and then he got angry he was like dude <laughs> you saw me struggle why didn't you say anything and i'm like i don't know i just wanted you to figure it out like i, I, I you're playing the game i don't want to hurt you like i don't want to affect you in that sense you s- <laughs> i feel like that was because of the trauma of watching like that you were scared to say something exactly so like I got screwed on <laughs> both ends in that sense. That was a good. Have you game, ever though. had therapy? Yeah, I, I go to therapy now. Uh, yeah. How long have you been going to therapy? If you don't mind divulging um, that, is it a new thing? December of twenty twenty. Oh, so a while. Yeah. You go every week. I used to. Now it's like every month or every other month or whenever I need her or whenever she's available. <clears throat> but average is once a month. I mean, there's obviously more important things in life than fear of backseat gaming, but is that the kind of thing you would talk about with a therapist? I, I've i never been, so I don't know what therapy no, is really I mean, like. A therapy can be whatever you want it to be. Right. Like, if you're going to lie to your therapist, you're wasting your money. Like, you put whatever, whatever umph you put into it, whatever thought you put into it, you'll get it in return. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do my best to talk about the most traumatic things and just go on from there. Like, because I'm like, I, I want to get my money's worth, <laughs> you know? Um, I've been experiencing or like noticing a lot of judgment around people who like chew, like don't want to go to therapy and mm-hmm. like accusing 
those people of like not taking their mental health seriously yeah. and kind of makes you like a bad partner, a bad yeah. friend. And I, I see what they're saying. I'm sure therapy helps a lot of people. And, but the fact that I kind of like, I have this mentality, like I'm going to, I'm going to tough it out and just figure my shit out on my own. Okay. Um, I'm going to, is it okay if I go deep? Like if I go heavy with you here? Please. All right. So <laughs> what you just said is, is just an example of you being a victim of toxic masculinity. There's in no way, shape, or form you should suffer or tough it out. I mean, if you want to, there's moments like that, but society tells you to tough things out when you shouldn't. Like, it's okay to feel your emotions. Okay? In that sense. Yeah. Okay? And the other thing, too, is this is a compliment to you because I, I've been, I, I noticed you, um, I, I know you for like 10 years and you have improved. You pay attention, hardcore attention to your mental health. Um, I mean, I know that you are a bit of a people pleaser sometimes, but like you do that first and then afterwards you're like, nah, dude, I, I need time for myself. So it's something complimentary. You should be proud of yourself. I know it's hard for to do that, but you are noticing certain habits and you're trying mm -hmm. to deconstruct it or deprogram it. Wow. Okay. Thank you. That actually means a lot that you would say that. <clears throat> um <laughs> But, I mean, if you need it, it's there. If you don't need it, it's fine. You know? Yeah, uh, that's what it comes down to. I don't feel yeah. like I need it, but I do have habits that I would say are unhealthy that I should work on probably, mm -hmm. but I uh, I don't know if therapy is the answer. It, it might help. It might not. But, I mean, uh, also your, your art is therapeutic and your music is therapeutic. So there's yeah. that. Do you think therapy, if you have an outlet like therapy for all that stuff, would it prevent you or like rob the ability of art to be a cathartic that's thing? That's a good question. We don't know. We don't know. That's that's a very good philosophical question because sometimes yeah. it makes you wonder, is therapy just another social construct of progressing capitalism? <laughs> and l let me get deeper on that. Like instead of like using... Um, channels to connect or you know use your emotions to in a, in, a, in a good way you're just using your therapist to vent and then just move on you know so, right so it's all it depends on how you make it instead of channeling it into something constructive or like productive and i thought you were going with that like the idea that therapists it's a job and therapists make money off of providing that service so that's they're they're, that they're trying to survive in this capitalist world there's that too so um and if you're a good therapist and you're helping people i think that's a noble thing you should make a living to do that but yeah that's a big old can of worms right there it is um Another compliment I want to give you. Um, um, this, our friendship, or you know, this, ever since I met you, this is the most open you've ever been in that I've noticed about you. I thought, oh yeah, I thought when I first met you, what, two thousand twelve, two thousand eleven, around there, thirteen, around there. I don't um, know exactly. I thought you were closed off on purpose, <laughs> and then like to me, just to me, because you didn't trust me. And I, uh, I'm sorry, I talked a little bit behind your back, but I talked to about, about certain friends, <laughs> right. our mutual friends about you. And I thought, like, because I was wondering, I was like, does this motherfucker hate me? Uh, and he's like, no, that's how he is. I was like, really? That's how he is? Like, he's that close to everyone? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's his personality. Let it be, you know? I'm, I'm not going to push it. Wow. So, but I, I literally thought that, you know, I, I wasn't taking it personal, but I literally thought that you were like, pushing me away because you didn't want to open that can of worms of your personal life so you're you're talking about when we started playing in a band together and we would hang out and yes. you felt like i was pushing you away then or being closed off then i mean i can totally see it because i had just extreme social anxiety and i wouldn't i i to this day i struggle to talk about myself with mm -hmm. friends like i don't i don't open up i'll I, i'll listen i like talking to people about a topic I'm interested in, but I don't open up. So, mm -hmm. um, and now I've known you for 10 plus years. So of course I'm, I'll be more open, Yeah. but yeah, it wasn't just you. I think it was 
it was everyone back then. And I still have a very small social circle of people that I feel like I can open up to. I mean, and also not to get personal, but you were going through some very hardships in that moment of your life. So, so yeah, yeah it was, uh, I mean, early twenties are, are a weird time, no matter what you're going through. <laughs> oh, hopefully you have some trauma that like builds some character. If you, if you'd never have that, like you'll just be a baby when you're 30 true, and true. some people are like that. Yeah, but at the same time, you want the trauma that you can live with. You know, not the trauma that makes you want to just unalive yeah. yourself. You know. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. I was ever at that point. I know, and you never were. But I'm just saying overall, uh, in general. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's talk about Jay Z. <laughs> so, what do you think about Jay Z? What, what is it that you like about Jay Z? Unreasonable doubt. Well. It's appropriate that we're talking about that time in 2012, 2013, because th that's when I discovered this album. And uh, I, I think I just heard that it was considered his best album. He was an artist that I wanted to learn more about. So I, I listened to it and I, I loved it from the beginning. Um, I like his, just his flow, the sound of his voice, I think is really interesting and musical it's like you can immediately tell it's jay-z and it's not a particularly pleasing voice but I, I mean actually i think he knows what to do with it he he finds really interesting rhythmic hooks and just something just pleasing to my ear about the sound of his voice it's kind of like sharp and like thin in a way i i like how confident he is when he raps Especially in this yeah. album, he's very, very confident. You can, you just it oozes out confidence. He's confident, and he's like, he's got a lot of braggadocio about being. He makes it sound like he's the biggest drug kingpin in yeah. in New York, which I don't know if that's true or not. I know he was definitely involved in like drug dealing and stuff, and he was in his. He was pretty old when he put out his first album. He was like twenty six, twenty seven, I think, mm -hmm. and had already been on the streets, like, doing illegal shit for a I while. Mean, and it's also impressive that this was his own record label, too. Yeah, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. Put out your own album on your own label. So he must have been on, like, the come up gradually, yeah. producing other artists and stuff. Well, in, um, I read a little bit of it. Like, he was trying to get support, but people kind of, like, dropped him. So, like, mm -hmm. he used, you know, he, he used drugs to support himself. And once he had that amount of money, he, you know, he used that money to support himself musically. So, yeah, which is, which is good. You know, it's nice. It's, it's, I know this is weird to say, like, um, but uh, it doesn't matter where the money comes from. Yeah, it does matter. But like, it feels cool to see musicians putting their money where their mouth is and trying to use it to support themselves or trying to like, they're using their art to support themselves like i know there's lots of artists but when i heard that i instantly thought of neil young because he did that hmm. a lot he 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 spent a lot of his money just for his art for his music and some so it's sometimes some businessmen would consider that a failure some other people consider it a success so i don't know you're talking about more recent Neil no, in young, general, right? in general, like I, I, I heard this from the podcast. As you can tell, listen to the best show, and there's like a sub, uh, episode episodes where they talk about uh, called so far where they reviewed Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young's discographies, like all of them and individually and all that stuff. Wow, which is intense. It was very intense. Why uh, is it called so far? Uh, it's a Crosby, Stills and Nash reference. No, okay, CSNY reference. Okay, um, but. There was a moment in 92, 93 where Neil Young was doing uh, Unplugged, and he hated it. He hated it. Uh, he paid money to MTV for it not to be released, and he did it again, and he was satisfied with it. You know, stuff like that. So he paid a lot of his own money for it. Ooh, so. Yeah. So it's nice to, it's refreshing to hear that, you know, like Jay-Z put his money where his mouth is, and went from there um and it and it was a gamble that paid off for him the, yeah. he blew up after that 
So it's funny to go from Tribe Called Quest, where they're pretty clean in terms of subject matter yeah. and they're not not really, um, what's the word, glamorizing illegal activities mm-hmm. to Jay-Z being like having skits where there's machine gun fire and like a mobster, the John Leguizamo voice guy, <laughs> uh, just talking about killing people. What do you think of the sound effects of the guns? You know that it was coming from a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really fake. I love it. It's it's very it's very nice. But somehow Jay Z seems like a righteous guy, despite being involved in that. He he seems like he he's not just evil and fucking people over. He's just trying to. He's looking out for himself and his loved ones, and he's trying to support them the best he can. Do you have a favorite? moment of the album or a favorite piece or part that that you enjoyed the most god so there, there's so many great songs on this like can i live i think is one of my the highlights of the album it's like more laid back and like philosophical <laughs> um I like the first song, Mary J. Blige has like backing vocals. She was or good. Or sings a, like the hook on the she first song. She was very good. So good. Yeah. That's something I wish there was more of on Low End Theory. I think there's one song where there's a female hook. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah, I forget yeah. which song it is, but it's a good song. And it might have helped each song have a little more distinctive vibe. But I think Jay Z, every song kind of sounds different. Uh-huh. Like the production is different, there's a recognizable hook. However, um, please give me some com- criticism. Compared to a Trap Cold Quest, I don't think Jay Z's songwriting wasn't as good compared to Low End Theory. Just songwriting? You mean yeah. like his whole like lyricism, lyricism of rapping? Yeah. Man, I disagree. I think he's like God tier. But compared to Low End Theory, though. Well, that, you've that, you've heard Low End Theory more times than I have, and okay. I've heard Reasonable Doubt more times. So I think I just know it a lot yeah. better. And I, I, like rap is complex. It's like Shakespeare or something, where there's all the nuances of rhyme that you. It takes multiple listens to really appreciate what they're saying. So, mm-hmm. I think Reasonable Doubt is incredibly dense and like skillful lyricism. But A Tribe Called Quest, I, I haven't heard enough times. Okay, you got a point there. Um, how do you feel how this album... Wait, I, I, do you have an example of you think Jay-Z's songwriting is weak versus A Tribe Called Quest being stronger? Um, like, That's a heavy accusation to make. The third track from a tribe called, from Low End Theory, I forget what it's called. Uh, I, I like the lyrics there better than the first song of Unreasonable Doubt. Can't Knock the Hustle. Yeah. I mean, the the thing that gets Can't Knock the Hustle so good is, you know, Mary J. Blige, like, the hooks. Yeah. The the yeah. Jay-Z's rap on Can't Knock the Hustle so is, it's an album opener. It's not yeah. super deep. Yeah. So I, I hear what you're saying there. Um, my favorite portions of that album is uh, Brooklyn's Finest with... Uh, with Biggie. Biggie. It was, that was good. That's a fun song. Yeah. Um, Two twenty twos, because again they're referencing a tribe called Quest with the "Can I Kick It." Yeah, uh, I also like how emotional he got with uh, "Regrets." Yeah, I love yeah. that song. I think of that song a lot, like learning to live with regrets. I think it's the perfect song for when you have those moments, like when you can't sleep at night and you're thinking about some dumb shit you did ten years ago. You like yeah. regrets, like you, you got to learn to live with them. Could that be the reason why he thinks that's his best album? Because like now with Beyonce, Beyonce and the <laughs> stuff that he experienced, like. Maybe that album still, you know, is an emotional moment of his life. Um, it definitely could be. I mean, it was the last album I think he made where he's like a, an ordinary person, yeah. even though he was involved in like he's drug dealing and stuff. Yeah. He's not a billionaire yeah. yet. So he's talking about real shit. Yeah. And then you hear like Blueprint and stuff a few years later and. It's like party pop music. It's like it H to the Izzo, yeah. like girls, so, girls, girls. It's all just like party rap. It's like it's like it's like Kanye's uh, college dropout. You know, like people still understood Kanye because he was still a normal, a normal guy. You know. Yeah, yeah, totally. And you can see why Kanye and really looked up to Jay and like they did. They collaborated yeah. together. 
one thing I'm surprised that they collaborated uh, in the future is because I listen, from this album, Reasonable Doubt, you, you hear that he doesn't care about God. He's not a Christian. <laughs> he says, like, I don't, there was a line where he says, I don't worship God, I wor- worship God. Gotti. <laughs> John so Gotti. He, he was like... <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I mean, I know that's like mafia, like mob kind of yeah. culture there, or trying to reference it. But like, he does talk a lot about he doesn't care about God. It's all about the money, or doesn't care. You so, which makes me wonder, like, you know how there's a lot of conspiracy theories about him being in the Illuminati or something like that. So like, yeah, or like he's more of a support of the demonic forces than than God. You know, Christian like forces. So like, I hear it here a little bit, but I don't know if it's just him basically saying like, money's important right now. I don't care about the religious portion, which is also controversial because uh, that is a crucial portion of the culture in hip hop. You know, they do talk about God, like Bone Thugs and Harmony. They talk about God a, a lot and. You know, they were big around I love time. Bone Thugs. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of Christianity and other rappers, and Jay-Z has never been... I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider him Christian at all. Yeah. He might be, but he doesn't rap about it. But and Kanye I, talks about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, and it, he doesn't really live like he's uh, mm-hmm. that, yeah. <laughs> taking Christ's teachings to heart very much. That's so... Which we're going to talk about a bit later. Did you did you see how there was a uh, some YouTube guy or TikTok guy interviewing him, and you said what's his favorite meal, and you heard how he responded? No. Uh, it was uh, the P word. <laughs> this is Kanye, Kanye in a recent that. interview. Yeah, a recent interview. Uh, I think he just says whatever is going to be the most. He said outrageous. it in front of his wife too, which made me laugh even more. <laughs> What do you think of, I guess we're just going full on Kanye right now. What do you think of Kanye's, do you follow him on Instagram? He posts oh, like all to. these nudes of his new partner, yeah. wife. Not nudes, but just yeah. like flaunting her body. But she's like usually hiding her face. It's really odd. It is odd. Uh, I just think it's very weird with him being a father and his new album has his kid in it. And, and he does this too. I don't know. It just... And then I saw one of his recent posts was like naming the school that his children go to and telling Kim, like, take my kids out of specific school uh, because they're they're bad or something. And then all the comments were calling him out for like, I can't believe you would post your kids school on Instagram and people are going to go like stalk them or something. He's very unhinged. And I... (laughs) I agree, but I also going to say that Kim is a little bit problematic too. So, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure she is. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I never watch like Kardashian content, so I don't really know what she's all about. But I'm sure she's got lots of her own problems. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. That's a good tangent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about recent events in we... our our past? Or, or subjects, or um, or do you want to keep it short? I, I'm curious what the time is because we're we're shooting this in 4K. So if you like seeing our faces in high resolution, uh, we'll keep doing it. But we have a bit of a time limit. We've been going for about an hour. All right, I'll make it quick and then call it a, call it quits for the episode. Yeah, unless I think of something I want to add, but I think I've said my piece on oh, both. Same here. Uh, which one do you like better? Reasonable Doubt? Yeah, I think Reasonable Doubt's always going to be in my like rotation of albums. But I'm... I, actually, before we yeah. change topics, I did yeah. want to ask, like, as someone who appreciates a good crime drama, like uh-huh. you're a big Sopranos fan, yeah. I feel like Reasonable Doubt almost plays like... A crime drama but it's it's not in depth you know it's very no but very basic it's got skits yeah. and i think if you read between the lines of the lyrics there's a lot of story there i like there's a song called the come up where he's like interviewing a young rapper or mm-hmm. he's another rapper on the track but he's actually playing the role of like an up-and-coming like right hand man of the mafia guy and there's a lot of like flavor to that interaction. Do you think this album was the trendsetter, quote unquote, of like like gangster rap, mafia rap? I mean, I know NWA I don't had actually gangster know. And stuff, but like 
when did Straight Outta Compton come out? That's a little earlier, right? 89 through 92. So, like, that's it's obviously been a thing already. I think Jay Z took it to new levels of like classiness. Yeah, trying to give it like a Godfather vibe. Totally. Yeah. And it makes sense why he did like the American Gangster soundtrack later. Did he really? I, I didn't know that. I haven't seen that movie, but I know he did you a whole seen album. It? It's pretty good. That's Denzel, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and, I haven't uh, seen it. And Russell Crowe. For some reason, I don't know my, why my mind is, is like this. I know they're two different actors and they look completely different, but I get confused between Kurt Russell and Russell Crowe. Yeah, I mean, I think of them as totally different yeah. generations. Kurt Russell could be like Russell Crowe's dad or yeah, uncle or yeah. something. But that's Russell Crowe, right? An American gangster, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yes, 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 yes I it haven't, is. Yes, it is. I don't think I saw it. Who, 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 yeah, it's, yes, it is, because Russell Crowe was also in Gladiator. Yeah. Yes, so that's Russell Crowe. <laughs> Russell Crowe's been a lot in a lot of weird shit. Mm-hmm. Man, there's this just makes me want to talk about recent movies I've seen. Like, we just watched Poor Things. Isn't it good? You saw it too. Yeah. It's yeah. fucking crazy. The, 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 I made a joke to all my coworkers who've seen that movie. Did you see it in the theater? Yes, yeah, I saw it in theaters. Wow. Don't you think that movie Tim Burton hated it? Because like that's the movie Tim Burton wanted to make. <laughs> like 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 is struggling to make and here here's Yorgos Lontimos making it like that like it's not like it's an easy walk in the park for him like in in Tim Burton's like dedicating his whole life to make a movie like this I mean Tim Burton pulled that kind of style off in the 80s I think he he had it figured out but he's just like has gone off the deep end. It. like look, like poor things it's like a a masterpiece of that kind of like surreal vibe yeah, but it's so much more raunchy. I think Tim always, in his back of his mind, he's trying to make, make it, it like, like kind of a, like almost a fairy tale for kids yeah, or yeah, teenagers. Yeah. And this movie's like adult, oh, yeah. but it's got that whimsical, surreal, bizarre. Mm-hmm. I just love the cinematography, all the super wide lenses and like the blurring around the edges. Do you like the black and white between chapters? Between chapter, oh yeah, like the little still frame where she's like riding a seahorse or some random or, shit. Or walking in a hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, I'm jealous of you seeing that on the theater. I just saw it on that TV, but I'm jealous damn. of you seeing Saltburn on theater. I saw it. On no, TV. I didn't see it on the oh, theater. I you saw it on TV. No, oh, I haven't okay. been to the theater in months. I can't remember the last movie I saw in the theater. I kind of want to see the new Alien movie in August in the theater. You know that's funny. I just saw Aliens for the first time. In first January. time, the James Cameron one, nineteen eighty three. Very good. I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, without without making uh, without going into details, I think that's James Cameron's best movie. I I could uh, you could convince me of that. I can't think of one I like more. Uh, it's probably my favorite. I mean, people say Avatar is the best thing he's ever done. It's the highest grossing movie of all time too. You know, I recently rewatched Avatar and Way of Water. Like, well, I haven't seen the second one. Is it good? It's it's good. Uh, it gave me a newfound respect for Avatar, actually. So after Way of Water, we went back and watched Avatar one, and I remember not liking that movie. Went to the theater and I like with the glasses with my family, and like I didn't like the 3D. Everything was dark and blurry, and like I didn't see what the fuss was about. But seeing it again, just on a normal screen, and just appreciating it for the story and the visuals, it, it's a good movie. Um, months ago, you and I watched uh, a, a documentary series. You still make the argument that it's not a documentary, but I, I say that it is. Uh, How to with John Wilson. Yeah. Did you finish the whole thing? <laughs> no, I haven't watched it. There anymore. is an episode in season two where they talk, where he meets a group of people who love Avatar. And I don't like Avatar. I think that movie's mediocre. I don't care for it. But seeing the group of that 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 new perspective of people liking Avatar, I I I, I respect it. Because <laughs> getting, other that, people explain why they like it. I don't want to get. Like I, do, it I don't want to get into deep uh, <laughs> explanations. Cause I don't want you to watch it because yeah, I'll it, see that. It got heavy. It got emotionally heavy. Do you have to watch every episode to uh, no, to appreciate? Because no. I kind of want to skip right to that one. Yeah. No, you don't have to, but it's nice, you know, it's nice. (laughs) (laughs) 
yeah, yeah. To, to watch them all you mean yeah it's nice yeah I, I, yeah how to with john wilson is great if you haven't seen it watch it it will change your life for the better it taught me how to cook risotto that's why <laughs> um yeah let's let's um call it quits I mean, my favorite album is Low End Theory. I do like Reasonable Doubt a lot. I, I'm pleasantly surprised by it. Thank you so much for choosing that one. I don't hate it. I'll listen to it again. Maybe I'm going to listen to more Jay-Z's music because it kind of gave me hope. Like, he, he, he may be good. He's good. I Yeah, but I think it is his best one. <laughs> there, like, I've heard some others. Like, Blueprint's probably the one I've listened to the most at, besides this one, and it's... It's just not the same. Like, I don't want to rich, listen to a rich, famous person talk about their life. I want to hear, mm-hmm. like, something real and something... There's a hunger to music that people make when they're no, nobody still. Yeah, so I, I, I that. like that. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess my idea of this topic, this... What's the word? Format. We'll probably all always end up, if we do more of these, mm-hmm. end up with each of us just uh, doubling down on the album we like more. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but if anything, it'll broaden our musical horizons. Yes. And I hope you as an audience give this music a chance and we would love to know what you think. Yeah, if yeah. you listen to them both. Are you Team Jay-Z or Team Tribe Called Quest? I'm Team Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm Team Jay-Z because I like that unsavory illegal activity in my rap i don't want i don't want to hear about how uh you can be a goody two-shoes yeah help the economy <laughs> help the society yeah there's there's a song on low end theory about that right like about doing your like starting a business mm. and stuff no that's in no that's in reasonable doubt on well, I know there's yeah. a part on 22 twos yeah, where like we got to start twos. our own companies, like yeah. Rockefeller Records yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. But I thought there was something like that on Low End Theory. I, like, I, I can't remember where. Talking about how I have to check the lyrics, but it's it's all about helping. It's all about you know Black Pride and helping one another, and especially in community, you know, referencing Zulu Nation and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I wanted to see the documentary, the A Tribe Called Quest documentary, but it's impossible to find anywhere. Mm, I well, didn't even know you could it rent anywhere. it on like pay to see on YouTube or something, but I was trying to, nah, to torrent yeah. it and I couldn't find a copy. No, nah, can't blame me there. Well, uh, we're going to end with a, a little segment of local oh, okay. recent oddcast topic news. Uh, yeah, let's, let's call, I thought we were going to not do that, but let's, let's do Why it. Why not? Uh, oddcast Newscast is a new format. Uh, we're just going to be talking about new updates about the past topics we had. Um, let's go with the first one. Um, we got to find like a little news. Yeah. You've got to do that again let's where do, you just say like... The Oddcast Newscast. On today's say, topic... <laughs> say like do a whip turn yeah. to the camera and then uh say like now it's time for the oddcast newscast now it's time for the oddcast newscast on uh, today's topic <laughs> so the first first thing i want to talk about it is um they just uh announced uh Sinead o'connor's uh cause of death uh, we talked about it in the last episode a little bit of it, um, that it was not explained what it was, but they just said it, and uh, it was natural causes. So, Right, and she was how old? 53. It was in her 50s, 54, 55. Um, so my theory is correct then. Like She just died of a broken heart because her son died. Uh, I wanted to add this to you, uh, to, to the story. Like... Uh, you know, we talked about this before. Like, I was in the funeral industry before. I liked, I saw a lot of certificate death certificates, and he says here the cause of death. Mm-hmm. And I forget that there's a big cause of death when it comes to elderly people, and it's failure to thrive. That's what they say, failure to thrive. Wow. Yeah. So, is that, that different from natural causes, or is that kind of lumped in with? I natural think it's lumped causes? in. You know, we're basically like you still have the energy, but you just don't want to move on. Wow, so just, that is a yeah intense phrase yeah so i think that's sinead's thing failure to thrive but they just said natural causes you don't think like the family wanted to cover up something that would taint her reputation like there might have been some underlying issues 
I like mean, it's drugs Sinead. or something. Like if she did drugs, who cares? Like it's still Sinead, you know? Yeah, I'm I, not. Ta- I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I do want to talk about this one though. Like maybe we make it a future topic or something. But like Elliot Smith's death is very, very suspicious. Haunted, very suspicious. And I think people should talk more about it because I don't. Ever since you told me about it, I don't think it was a suicide. So yeah, you, he was you very did depressing. Some reading up on this story. Yeah, I, yeah, he was a depressing man, but I don't. Yeah. You I, can't yeah. stab yourself in the chest that many times, yeah. <laughs> like without. That's a lot of willpower if you do that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, people, fans of his definitely talk about it, but what can you do? Uh, his girlfriend, the, was like the only likely suspect who was living with him at the time, like we she's... Want justice, damn what, it. There, where's, where's the proof? We want justice. Justice for Elliot Smith. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this should be the new hashtag. Um, the other news uh, portion, this is a little bit controversial, but it's funny because we talked about these two artists in the past. Um so Kanye has a new album called Vultures, and um, he sampled a um, portion of Iron Man's Black Sabbath Iron Man. And Ozzy made a big tweet saying how he's against it because uh, Kanye is an anti-Semite. Um, you know, for a portion, I kind of agree with uh, with Ozzy, but at the same time, I don't because at least Kanye apologized. Like, he did say something that were quote-unquote anti-Semitic, but afterwards he apologized, and he said it in the most funniest way possible. He apologized saying these anti-Semitic things because he saw 21 Jump Street with Jonah Hill, and it changed his life. He's like, I'm not anti-Semitic anymore. I understand. I don't know. Kanye is weird, but that's what he said. 21 Jump Street <laughs> or 22 Jump Street? One of those two. I missed that quote. But Ozzy has no right to say that. Uh Someone dig, dug in his, to his uh, interviews in 1983. Ozzy said, and you, I'll show it to you, that he liked Hitler. Hitler was a great uh, performance. Like his speeches were like a performance, and he was admired by Hitler's <laughs> performance. So come on, so Ozzy. He, did a, he pulled a Kanye. Yeah, too. come on, Ozzy. Come on, come on. And, uh, also, Kanye. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this. Ozzy's health is not good. He's planning to play one last show, and his in this town home in England, I think Manchester, Manchester, I think it's called, like a live stream Birmingham, or something. Bir- Birmingham, it's in Birmingham. He's playing one last show, and that's it. He's done. Wow. Yeah. Do, do you uh, know what's wrong with him? Uh, he's just getting old. I forget what it is, but like I think his neck hurts a lot. His he's got spinal injuries. Oh man. So poor Ozzy. And that's the news I have for Oddcast Newscast. Thank you for the news update, yeah. anchor news anchor Oscar. And thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you very much. Uh, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Share it to your friends and family. We're doing our very best to make it PG or family-friendly, and I'm sorry, especially me, for dropping a little dirty word here and there. <laughs> I also wanted to throw out there um, suggestions of topics, bands, and mm-hmm. movies, like... We all we always just choose what we uh, like to talk about, but sometimes it helps to have a suggestion to hear uh, what somebody might want to listen to a podcast about. So if you have one that you've been you're burning to uh, get us to give our opinions on, drop us a comment below. And to piggyback that, um, you feel free to like ask. I mean, to do like a ask Dylan anything kind of questions and ask Oscar anything as well, or ask us, both of us, anything, and we'll just go from there. Yeah, yeah. especially Oscar. Yeah, I Oscar done. needs some questions. Yeah, Jew boy. Except for my whole mortician episode, that was that was Oscar intense. Ask Oscar every, everything. Yeah. By the way, we aren't fully caught up with back episodes on podcast platforms so this one might be uh, the first one we simultaneously upload on both okay just so you guys have the option of listening to it on spotify or youtube or google podcast google wherever podcast you is not anymore i think they're just going to youtube podcast yeah, yeah. so they removed the platform yeah I didn't apple know you can listen to it on apple 
It's crazy how these platforms like just change yeah. like that. No, no announcement. Just no, nope, that doesn't exist anymore. Google especially has a reputation. I, I, for doing I had that. A, I had an announcement because you know I have a Gmail account and I use Google Podcast before, mm. so it says, "Hey, we're not using this, but you can use it on YouTube since Google you owns YouTube." So, or Alphabet owns Google and YouTube. What's Alphabet? That's the parent company of Google. I never heard of that yeah. before. Yeah. I thought Google was the biggest umbrella alphabet. What the fuck? Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? All right, but toodles. Take toodles. care. Toodaloo. Take care.